Erev Tov, I'm Stephen ben Danun with Israeli News Live. Uh, we have breaking news happening in Israel. On the ground offensive this morning at approximately 3 a.m., the first casualty of the war was Ethan Barach. At 20 years old, it seemed that Hashem wanted him home instead. Uh, so he went home to be with Hashem, the Lord, and uh, I'm sure a very sad loss for their family, but a, not a loss at all. He is actually home now, along with the other great Israeli warriors, including that of King David. Uh, so God bless him for his valiant courage in the battle that he fought in this morning. Uh, moving on into other news, RT News, uh, the Russian television news network, uh, there was a live interview just moments ago, and uh, in the interview, this is uh, where uh, Inan uh, O'Neill hosts this program called Over the Edge, and he was in a young Israeli soldier interviewing Ilana Stein from Tel Aviv, and the one thing that he said that troubled me deeply in this interview was he accuses Israel of firing the first shot. And then he had the audacity of saying that Israel did not care for the humanitarian concern of the civilians in, Palest uh, the, excuse me, in, in Gaza, and the Palestinians in Gaza, which is furthest thing from the truth. Let me listen to what, the, some of the comments that he made and then some of the comments that Ilana Stein makes in response to that. But is it not really they're firing on you because they think you're firing on them first? We, we are looking at this huge loss of life. It is clearly angering Palestinians, the pictures that we've been showing and that are spreading around the world. By stepping up the operation, aren't you simply pushing in this into a spiral of violence that who knows when it could end? International law, Israel is obliged to protect civilians in the occupied territories. Doesn't this violate what you're doing, the responsibility you have towards the Palestinians? Yes, we have a responsibility uh, to civilians in general, and that's what we do. Before we attack, we have flyers that are saying that we're going to attack, even though sometimes this actually might be bad for us, because what the terrorists do is that they hide and they use them as human shields. What do we mean? These terrorists hide in bunkers, and they let ask the people to be on the rooftop so that they will protect them with their own lives. Think of how, how awful that is. They're asking the civilians, they're asking children and women to protect them. They are supposed to be the leaders, and that's what they do. But we try to uh, warn the civilians and say, please leave and some of them listen to us and leave and this and sometimes we also abort missions you can look it up in our in our websites we we have pilots actually aborting missions because they're told that there are children nearby and even though the next day this can be mean that these places are going to launch missiles at us at me in Tel Aviv we still think that this is better to abort a mission than to have children getting hurt so we're doing the maximum so that civilians will not get hurt but unfortunately Hamas in a very cynical way is just using the population for their own goal, which is just destruction. Okay. It's clear that the RT News Network is biased, uh, and as I said to you before, there is good reason for their bias, and that is they have already signed agreements with the Palestinian, the PA Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, for the oil and natural gas, the natural gas off of the coast of Gaza, as well as the, natural, uh, the oil reserves that are in the West Bank. And this actually belongs to Israel, all of this, both the natural gas and the oil. But the whole thing is, is that the Vatican does not want to see Israel becoming financially independent. It would actually throw a kink in their plans, a kink which would cause them to want to see that Israel is overthrown that there is a war against Israel that will cause severe Israeli losses where the Pope Francis can come in and appear to be the peacemaker of Israel. That's exactly what his intentions are. But instead, the truth of the matter is, as Ilana Stein also pointed out, Israel is constantly warning the civilians that they're about to make a raid, that they're about to engage in combat and to try to bring Hamas to its knees in their aggression against Israel, sending leaflets, not only leaflets, but phone calls. In fact, they know the numbers of every building there. If they can call that number, they call the number and they warn them. But as she pointed out clearly in her interview, even pilots, as they're flying overhead and their targets that are there, when they have children there, they will abort the mission. But what kind of enemy is it? 
that is not man enough to be real men. If you really believe in your cause, go out and fight your cause as a man. But instead, Hamas is a bunch of little sissies, a bunch of little whiners that have to hide behind mama and hide behind their children because they're not man enough to be men and come out and fight like men. Instead, they are committing genocide against their own people having their own children, innocent little children that know nothing about what this really is going, what is going on. But they send their children out to be killed. In fact, also in the news clips that you're seeing playing in the background where you see them running uh, uh, adults and stuff into the hospital, they often make this appear as if these are just civilian casualties, especially with the adults, but most of the time it is actually fighters that are wounded in battle. You have to remember, Hamas does not use uniforms. They're just a bunch of thugs running around with weapons firing back. And of course, when it comes to the humanitarian side of it, why isn't there anything said by RT News about the constant barrage of rockets falling on Israel only in civilian populations? Why is it that when Israel has all of their tanks and uh, armament at the border there, they're not firing directly on the Israeli soldiers? No, it shows their intention is to do nothing but to destroy the lives of children and innocent civilians and including their own. It is deplorable to say the least. RT News, tell it like it is. Don't hide behind your agenda to be able to get your natural gas and oil reserves. No wonder why the biblical account says the king of the north will come to take a spoil You'll come against Israel because why? You're afraid you're going to lose your oil and your gas. When you see Israel really pushing the gun here, really pushing the envelope as it were, and when you begin to see that you're losing your stronghold and that you're, maybe you won't get your natural gas, maybe you won't get your oil reserve, then you'll come in there and try to attack Israel then. Well, you too, just like the Muslims that want a jihad, you will find out what a holy war really is all about. This is when God will send his two witnesses. I'm Stephen Bendenoon with Israeli News Live, telling you the way it really is. Shalom.